Today is Earth Day and this video is part of an energy challenge that you can be a part of. But in this video, I'm going to share with you some of my tips on how you can save energy and save some money with your smart home. Now, Brian from Automate Your Life invited me to be a part of this energy challenge sponsored by IFT. You too can also be part of this energy challenge by going to the link in the description. There, you can submit to IFT how you use your smart home to save energy. Then the folks over at IFT will go through all the submissions, they'll calculate all the energy saved by your suggestions. Make sure to go down to the description, look for that link, go check out Brian over at Automate Your Life. And also there's a playlist down there of other creators who have made energy challenge videos. So check them out too. Now using smart devices can help you save energy and money, but they're also really fun and cool to use. You can have your house do things for you. So don't be afraid to dive in, have some fun with it, get some smart devices and play with some automations. The first thing and probably the most important thing to save energy and money uh, with your smart home is using automations and routines. You can buy all the coolest, latest smart devices and trigger them from your phone, but they're not gonna do any good if you leave them on after triggering them from your phone. That's where automations and routines can come in. Now, if you're not familiar with Alexa routines or Apple's HomeKit automations, they allow you to control devices or scenes using door sensors, motion sensors, time of day, voice, and some other triggers in there. Now, just give you a brief overview. If you wanna make an Alexa routine, you would go into the app, you would hit the more section, then you would go to routines, hit the plus sign in the right-hand corner, enter the routine name, and then you have when this happens. That's where you decide your triggers. If you wanna make a time-based routine, you hit schedule, you pick when you want it to happen, go to next, and then you can add the actions you want to happen. And not only can you control your smart home, but you have all these other actions too. Now, if you're using Apple's HomeKit, you would go into the Home app. From there, you'd hit the plus sign, add an automation. And here you're gonna see your choices, people leave, people arrive, time of day, when an accessory is controlled. And then you have sensors such as door or motion sensors. You pick which one you wanna use, time of day, let's say, sunset, you can pick which days, next and then we can trigger scenes or we can scroll down and grab the individual devices we want to use now as we go through this i'm going to give you examples of some routines that i use that help automate my house and limit devices being left on just burning energy and wasting money. Next tip is using time-based automations. Using time is probably the most used trigger I have and the one I would say is gonna save you the most amount of money. There are things we do each day that we could automate, such as turning on lights or turning off lights, and especially turning off lights. That's gonna save you a bunch of energy there not to have random lights on. Now my house, we don't turn on or off the lights in the living room and we don't shut the curtains. What I did is I made an automation in the morning that when you come down, it turns on some lights down in the living room. Then I have a time-based automation at sunrise that opens up the curtains. Then later in the day, a couple hours before sunset, when the sun's starting to cook in the window, uh, we have an automation that'll turn on some lights and close those curtains. Before, when we didn't close the curtains, it would heat up the house, that room would get hot, which then would kick on the air conditioning, just wasting money. Now with those curtains closing, the room doesn't get hot and the bill isn't as high because we saved energy. Now besides saving energy, it's cool that this stuff just happens in the background. At the right time of day, the curtains close. When you'd want them open in the morning, they open for you. It's Pretty slick. Now, if you want to automate some curtains you already have like I do, I'm using a product from SwitchBot called the SwitchBot Curtains, and it is basically a little motor that opens up the curtains for you. I'll put links to that down in the description if you want to check it out. Next is using sensors and buttons. A big part of saving money with home automations is taking advantage of different sensors such as door, motion sensors, and I really like to use buttons. Now in my office, I have a motion sensor that's set up for a limited amount of time, which is cool. It's only a certain window of time that I want the light to come on. I don't need it on during the middle of the day. It is in 
enabled only from 30 minutes before sunset to 30 minutes after sunrise, just when it's dark in here and I would need the light. Now, for some reason I leave the room and the lights are on after 30 minutes, they'll turn off automatically. I have multiple closets that I use door sensors on. So when the door is open, it's going to turn on some strips that I put in the pantry. When I close the door, it's going to trigger a different routine that is gonna turn those lights off. These are very simple. You could get more complicated and write shortcuts and all that stuff, but this is nice, easy stuff that can save you money. Now, big one for me that I like is having buttons. This here is a flick button. I did a video on it. I'll put down in the description. But having buttons like this, which has three different settings on it, is great. It gives you physical control so you don't need to open a device or use your voice. You just have a button to press. In here, single press will turn off my lights. Double press will turn on a lamp for hanging out, and long press will turn my video lights back on. It's so convenient. In my garage, I have it set up so that a single press turns off the lamps and the strips in there. A double press will bring on the kind of relaxing level with those strips and the lamps. And then a long press will turn off all those lights and just bring the overhead lighting down. But it's a lot easier than to remember to go over, switch everything off, um, you just walk by and just click, push a button, it's done. Along with that is you could make these automations do additional things like turn on your alarm or lock the door for you. It doesn't have to just be limited to controlling lights. There's so many other smart devices. A company I like that's making affordable home kit devices is Acara. They got a great lineup of stuff, but this is their button and it does the same thing. Single press, double press, and long press for different actions. So it's much easier to distribute buttons around for especially the the non-tech in there who just wants to press something. Next tip is look at smart switches. Everybody thinks about smart plugs and smart bulbs. The problem with those is that one, they always need to have power, and two, smart bulbs and switches don't always work in certain situations. I really like smart switches. They give you the best of both worlds. You have that physical button so that when my mother-in-law comes over, she just pushes a button to turn it on, the way she always would turn the kitchen lights on. Except now I have smart home control, which is awesome. In my house, I swapped everything over to Lutron, Cassetta, dimmers and switches. They aren't the cheapest option, but Lutron's been making dimmers and switches for years. They are a name in that space. And it's my house, it's where I'm gonna be all the time, so I'm willing to spend an extra 10, $20 per switch. Now with switches, you might need to hire an electrician to do it, especially if you don't feel comfortable, but if you're doing a bunch of switches, it might not be too bad per cost. It also opens up a lot of possibilities for automations that could save you money down the road. Now, if you're somewhere where you, uh, maybe you're renting and you can't install a switch or any other location, you can't replace the switch, there is the SwitchBot button pusher, uh, which if you look at this video here, it attaches to your switch and pushes the button for you and then pulls it. Uh, so very unique solution. But what this does, like smart switches, is it opens up control in places where bulbs might not make sense. One place I like having a switch is in my daughter's bathroom. They'll leave that light on, it has a fan with it. Um, so if I swap the bulbs, it doesn't solve the fan being on. But now, with that smart switch, shut it down like I do their room. This is great, I have automations throughout the house. I take advantage of this next tip, which is create shutdown routines. Just make routines for different points in the day that verify things are turned off. Like I have a routine that is motion-based so when you come down the stairs, it turns on lights in the morning. But come eight o'clock, my daughters are gone, uh, my wife's upstairs working, I'm probably in here, and it's easy to leave the kitchen lights on and not think about it. So at eight o'clock, I have an automation that 
turns off the kitchen, turns off the hall lights, and makes sure the stair lights are off. Also, my daughter's bathroom and lights. So that right there starts saving money because you could go hours leaving that stuff on. Another shutdown automation I use is at 11 p.m. at night. It shuts down the kitchen lights. Uh, it shuts down the living room lights, which is a great re reminder. It's probably time to go to bed, but also it really takes care of those lights that we can easily leave on and that just burn power through the night doing nobody any good. Now, one of the things I love about the Apple Home app is that it gives you a status of devices across the top. So I can see right here, my living room is unlocked. I have eight lights on, two switches on, and two outlets on. Okay, two outlets, the switches. Okay, those lights should all be on. See, I gotta double check, make sure everything's off. That is very convenient for checking in. So if you do see that, wait, that shouldn't be on, you can do a quick check and turn it off. Really the answer to saving money in your smart home is not just the devices, it's the automations behind it. So definitely play around, learn how this stuff works, and in the end, not only will you save some money, you have a pretty cool house too. Now, what is your best energy saving tip for your smart home? Let us know in the comment section. Next, make sure to check out this video over here for some more great smart home information. I don't know what's there yet, but it's gonna be good. I'm not gonna put a bad one there for you. I'll see you over there. Thanks for watching, bye.